the Heritage Rough Rider versus the Ruger Wrangler. Let's check it out. Guys, we're going to go head to head with the Heritage Rough Rider versus the Ruger Wrangler, and this is actually the Super Wrangler. Uh, we're going to take a look at a lot of the details. We're going to take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of both. Uh, these are two great little 22 single action pistols. But if you're making a decision between the two, uh, hopefully this will give you some ammunition to be able to make the best choice for you. And a big thanks to Gun Zone Deals for sending the Heritage Rough Rider and a big thanks to Ruger for sending the Super Wrangler. The Heritage Rough Rider versus the Ruger Wrangler. Uh, we're gonna talk about some different things about these two. Why would you choose one over the other? There's some advantages and disadvantages. One of the things I want to mention up front is this Heritage Rough Rider. I mean, I have been seeing these for years, and the price has been just crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, $100 or just a little bit more for a revolver. And to be honest, I mean, it's a good little revolver. I have uh, done a full review on this, and I have it annotated above. But this is a great little option. Uh, again, these start out at about $99, which is crazy. Now, it can upgrade according to the features. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, but Ruger introduced their Wrangler, uh, and this honestly is an answer to the heritage. The single six, I'm sure, was losing a lot of market uh, because here's a single six. It's all blue, beautiful steel frame. Aluminum grip, which is typical for all of your single actions, unless they're the Super Blackhawks. But this is just a classic, beautiful gun, uh, one that Ruger has been making since the 50s. But they're expensive, especially compared to this Heritage. And really, to be honest, yes, the single six looks really nice, but the Heritage does not look that bad. Now, Taurus owns Heritage, and they have been putting out a ton of different models, different grips, different barrel lengths, 22 long rifle, 22 Magnum cylinders, and while the Ruger came in at first with the Wrangler, which is 22, uh, and it came in three different colors, black, um, this bronze, burnt bronze color, and a silver color. Uh, but there's so many choices with the Heritage. But then Ruger introduced their Super Wrangler. Uh, and one of the big pluses for this is that not only did it have adjustable sights, which was an upgrade from in the original Wrangler, they also included a 22 Magnum cylinder, so this makes it a convertible. Uh, but this particular Heritage also comes with a 22 Magnum cylinder. And so you have a lot of options. The Heritage also comes with a model with adjustable sights. But the price difference is pretty significant between these. But this is a lot cheaper than the Ruger Single Six. Now let's check to make sure the guns are unloaded. I'm just gonna pop them open. Click around, this is empty. Ruger, empty. And any of the guns that we're showing have been safety checked. Now to get things started, uh, these are both single action revolvers and that means that when I pick up the gun to fire it, I have to pull the hammer back. Uh, it makes it fairly inexpensive because it's a very simple system. And then I fire the round and then for the next round, pull the hammer back. I mean, these are slow to fire, they're slow to load, which we'll look at that, and they're cheap to shoot. And so it just makes it a very appealing, almost nostalgic, getting out kind of like the old cowboy days. And so it, that's one of the reasons why they're so popular. Uh, and the same thing with the Ruger. It's a single action revolver. 
Uh, they both have kind of a similar style grip angle. Now both guns come with a six round capacity in the cylinder, but you can get the Heritage with a nine round capacity. Uh, again, guys, different barrel lengths, uh, different sizes, different, again, sights, uh, different finishes. Uh, there's even a, it's kind of a faux case hardened kind of receiver on the Heritage. Tons of different grips. I mean, they do offer a lot. And I'm sure that the Ruger Wrangler is going to be adding more and more to their line. Now, they do come with this plastic grip, but any of your single six grips will fit. So there's a lot of aftermarket grips that you can put on here. In fact, your Blackhawk grips will fit not only your single six, but they also fit the Wrangler and the Super Wrangler. And with the Super Wrangler, again, you do get that 22 Magnum cylinder and your 22 cylinder. Uh, this actually is not a bad self-defense option better than 22. So this really kind of ups the game and it's actually, it expands your hunting capabilities. Uh, so 22 Magnum, it's actually become considerably more expensive than your 22 long rifle. So you can shoot that for cheap, which makes these very appealing. Uh, the low recoil, taking kids out or first time shooters, this is a great option. And again, it just slows everything down. I really love taking 22 out, especially with new shooters. But more similarities between the Wrangler and the Rough Rider is they both have those fixed sights. Uh, and so it just makes it just a nice little sight picture. They're pretty accurate guns. Uh, they both have kind of a silver styled hammer. All the same function and features are on both of the guns. But what are the differences? One of the major differences right up front is that you have an aluminum alloy receiver with the Wrangler. You have a zinc alloy frame with the Heritage Rough Rider. Uh, and this is called Zamac. Uh, and it's honestly similar to kind of pop metal. It's what uh, a lot of the Saturday Night Specials are made of because it's such an inexpensive material. Uh, one of the problems though to me with Zamac or zinc alloy is that it doesn't finish very well. Uh, you can see a lot of just defects, flaws in the metal. It's just not smooth. And that's one of the downsides. But again, it is just an inexpensive plinker. Uh, with the Ruger and the aluminum, it's really well done. Very nice finish. Uh, you know, everything about it is just really nice quality. Now, one thing you'll notice is the barrel on the Heritage is a beautiful blue. Uh, and also on the cylinders. Now the cylinder on the Ruger is blued, but it is a Cerakote finish all the way throughout. Cerakote's gonna hold up really well, but it goes against the traditional look of that blue. And so to me, as far as just a traditional looking single action revolver, this Heritage really has it beat. The Wrangler kinda comes in at a more modern look, but yet that older style. When it comes to grip fitment, you'll notice that the Ruger, I mean, it is just fit like a glove. Uh, when it comes to the Wrangler, you have just some enlarged areas right here, and that's happened with a lot of them, I've noticed. Uh, the grips just don't quite fit to the frame just as closely as it does with the Ruger. Uh, but again, you can get a number of different style grips to go on here. This is Cocobolo. It came uh, with this one. I chose it from Guns on Deals but they have all kind of different colors and different designs, you name it. You can really kind of customize it with just the grips. One big departure though is the action. Uh, with the Heritage Rough Rider, we have four clicks. That is very similar to the Colt design, the original Colt design. Uh, and with it, you have a safety notch and then you have a loading notch. So you have to half cock this to be able to turn the cylinder. And you'll notice you hear the clicks. Uh, it's just allowing you to click it, but it does stop it when you get ready to load it. So each one is stopped. Uh, and then this is your loading gate. It's the same with both. Uh, now, the third click is right here. And it's really just an added click. It doesn't really function anything. In fact, even in the owner's manual, it says it is of no consequence to the shooter. The fourth click brings it into the fully cocked position. And that's where you fire the handgun. And when it comes to the Ruger, it's two clicks. There's no safety click. And then it comes all the way back. And if you'll notice when you pull that first one, it'll actually return back to the frame. With the second click, you're in fully cocked position. So this is just a two click and it's made to just be more simple. It allows for this to be produced cheaper by Ruger. 
But one of the things about Ruger is typically with their single actions, they're some of the strongest single actions uh, made. I mean, they really make some really beefy, tough single action revolvers. Uh, they'll take a lot of different loads. Of course, this is a rimfire, it's in 22, but it still goes in that same spirit of just a very strong action. So I'm not gonna say that's really a ding, it just is what it is, but there's something about this that makes it really satisfying and I really like it. Now when removing your cylinder, uh, right here is your base pin latch. You push it in and you pull out your base pin and this holds in your cylinder. Open up the loading gate, the cylinder comes right out. One thing about the Heritage, it is fluted on the 22 and those are those little cuts in the cylinder. Uh, with your standard 22 Magnum, there is no fluting, and that just allows you to tell the difference. Uh, with the Ruger, there is no fluting on either one, but the 22 Magnum is marked. Now take your cylinder with the teeth facing toward the back, and that's part of your locking mechanism, with the uh, loading gate open, and then we take our base pin and we put it back through. And you have to just make sure that the cylinder is lined up, just like that. And so now we have 22 Magnum. It's really simple to change out. The Ruger's the same way. We're gonna use the Super Wrangler. Again, we're just gonna open that up so it turns freely. Hit that base pin latch, pull out your base pin, and the cylinder comes right out. Then we can take our 22 Magnum cylinder and drop it in. Uh, this just really allows too for cleaning, and that's the big thing with being able to pull these out. So if you just have just a 22, obviously you're gonna take that cylinder out to clean. And now, We've got this in 22 Magnum. And so that is, again, guys, to me, having the 22, 22 Magnum uh, is a little bit more expensive, but it's definitely worth it. Now, just as a side note, I just have the two Ruger cylinders here, the 22 and the 22 Magnum. Again, the 22 Magnum is marked. Uh, and with 22, of course, just drops down in it. Let's say that you have a 22 cylinder and you throw in a 22 Magnum. It just doesn't go in. It's just a little bit thicker. And then when we have our 22 Magnum, of course, it goes right in. Uh, and then the 22 will go in, but it's really loose. I don't know that it would really hurt it firing a few rounds through it, but I, I wouldn't do it just because, you know, it will kind of burn up a little bit of the cylinder over a long period of time. But the biggest thing is knowing that this 22 Magnum, it just won't fit. And so that's really a safety feature. The triggers are a little different. Uh, the Ruger has, to me, a little more finely finished trigger. Uh, it has a hollowed out section in the back. With the Heritage, it's just pretty much a, just a small curved trigger. It's pretty simple. It's not really anything to write home about, but they're both good triggers. Now, as far as the rear sights, uh, on the Wrangler, you can see it comes right to the back of the frame. Uh, on the Ruger, you have that little cutout and honestly, a little more crisp uh, square to be able to line up your front sight. And some of the roughness, again, from the uh, zinc alloy just doesn't really finish this off well like it does with the Ruger. But you will notice there is a little bit of wear right here in the Cerakote where the hammer has been hitting the back of the receiver. And the front sights are pretty close to the same. As far as trigger action with the Heritage, nice clean break. Not really any take up. Uh, with the Ruger, it's a little heavier trigger pull. It's still crisp, it's still the same feel to it, it's just a little heavier. Now this is an old model single six and it has three clicks. There's something really satisfying about that. I love it. But the Heritage has the original four. Also, with the Ruger, all you have to do is open the loading gate and you can freely spin the cylinder either way. Now, some people love that uh, and some people don't like it. Uh, one of the problems is that it doesn't just align to load the next round. Uh, but if you go past, you can always come back if you miss one. One thing about the Heritage and the Colts for that matter is as you're turning, it clicks to the next round. You can't reverse it. And so this gives you that ability to reverse it. But one of the problems is, is when you're unloading the rounds, you have to line that up to get those rounds out. And so there are some advantages and disadvantages with this. Uh, but once we close it, it locks into place. With the Heritage, it doesn't. And so again, we have to half cock and then open up our cylinder and you'll just notice click 
and it just stays into place. You have a little bit of movement where you can load that in and it can get off kilter to where you, yeah, where it'll actually bind on the cylinder if it's not lined up. But typically it lines up just right. The one thing the Heritage really has that a lot of people really don't care for. Uh, and for me personally, I don't really care for it, but for an external safety, I think this was the best place for it. Uh, when you get ready to fire the pistol, this is on safe. So you actually have to pull that down and you'll see the red mark. And this allows this to fire. Otherwise, this is an actual block. So when we push this up, it blocks access to the firing pin. And so this may come down, but you can see there's a little gap and this is gonna make it drop safe. With the Ruger, we have what we call the transfer bar and you can see it kind of popping up here. And this is gonna protect the hammer from hitting the firing pin unless you have it cocked. And so in that way, you know, this is safe and this is drop safe. The original old model single six with a three screw does not have the transfer bar. And to be honest, it is not safe to have one in the chamber if this falls, it can go off. But Ruger fixed that many years ago. Now, if we want to talk about durability, uh, I have read quite a bit where Heritage Rough Riders, the screws tend to come loose at times. Uh, and then they have these screws underneath right here with the grip. Uh, one thing I would recommend is taking a little bit of Loctite and just drawing those out and just giving that a little bit of extra that'll hold those into place. In fact, I was talking to Robbie Wheaton about single actions, and one of the things he said, being a gunsmith for 20 years, he said that he's never seen a single action revolver that didn't need their screws tightened every once in a while, regardless of the make. So these just tend to be uh, loose at times. Uh, one thing with the Ruger, they're pins. And so they're in place. You're not gonna lock those in, maybe down here at the grip, uh, and then maybe right here. So there are some points that you wanna check. The base pin on the Ruger has just some line serrations. Uh, with the Heritage Rough Rider, it has actual checkering right here. Also on the base pin latch, you have an exposed spring right here. Uh, this may could be tightened up some, but then you're going to lose that ability to just press this. That spring really works to free the base pin to come open. Uh, with the Ruger, it's a little shorter travel, and it's really simple. So just a couple of things to take note of. And honestly, this may be a little bit expanded. This may have come loose a little bit. So uh, we could actually try to tighten that up. Now we're going to weigh out the Heritage. 32.14 ounces. We're going to weigh out the Super Wrangler in comparison. Uh, it's got a little shorter barrel, but I think it's thicker. 32.9 ounces. Just a touch heavier. Uh, I think one thing is the barrel diameter. A little bit thicker on the Ruger. Let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman Trigger Gauge and Brownells. One pound. 15 ounces. Ruger Super Wrangler. Four pounds, 7.5 ounces. It's definitely heavier. Really appreciate Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo. We have a bunch of 22. This is 40 grain. Um, it's uh, go lead round nose going 1,050 feet per second. Okay. We have Federal 22 Magnum. Uh, these are cartridges I've had for a while. 40 grain also, and this is full metal jacket. Now guys, when it comes to just going out to the range and shooting them, I mean, it's a pretty much head-on experience. Uh, you know, when you're pulling back the hammer of the Heritage, it has just those extra clicks to it. Makes it kind of nice. But the one thing about the Ruger is it has more definite clicks, pulling them back. Uh, of course, one thing though that I really like about the Wrangler is that it has the transfer bar. 
uh, and it just makes it very safe. Uh, one of the things about the Heritage is it does have the safety, but it's a little unorthodox over your standard Ruger. But honestly, just head to head, I mean, they shoot very similar, uh, whether it's your 22 long rifle or, you know, either one goes with a 22 Magnum. And again, there's so many different options to be able to take out and shoot. But again, there's just something about that 22 long rifle is something about pulling that hammer back and just firing that round slow and easy, slow to shoot, slow to load, and slow to unload, and yet it's very satisfying. Uh, really, at the range, both of these are just excellent firearms, and you're going to get a lot of pleasure out of either one. To say one's better than the other at the range, not necessarily. It's just fun to take out. Of course, one thing I will say is that the adjustable sights do make a difference. And of course, Heritage does make their own adjustable sight version. Uh, so, you know, I would really like to up it to the adjustables. It gives you just a little more accuracy, a little more ease to get on target. Uh, but even with the standard gutter sights of the, the basic Rugers, the Wrangler and the Heritage, I mean, it's just a great little gun. It'll still be accurate even with those kind of sights. But with the adjustable sights with the Super Wrangler and with the adjustable sight version of the Heritage, it just gives you a little more ease to get those holes a little closer. Well guys, the big thing about these handguns really is a price difference. Uh, when you go with the Heritage, and that includes the um, 22 Magnum cylinder, these run $150.99 on the gun zone deals. But when you go without the 22 Magnum cylinder, these can run down to $99, uh, and that's just the base model. They can run on up to about $150 according to what you get. So but really about $100 to $125 for just the 22. Uh, when you have the Wrangler, which is only in 22, this is $175. When you go with the Super Wrangler with the adjustable sights and the 22 Magnum cylinder, which to me is the best way to go, um, this is $232.99. So there's definitely a pretty decent price difference. Even though under $250 for a Ruger with this kind of quality is a great buy, uh, you know, the <laughs> Heritage Arms, I mean, that's coming in at a very reasonable price. What are some pros and cons? Um, big thing is the fit and finish on the Ruger is better. The aluminum is easier to machine very smoothly. Uh, with the uh, zinc alloy frame, it's just a little rough, a little rough around this area. The bluing on the barrel and the cylinder is really nice. On the Ruger, you have a Cerakote finish, and especially those who are looking for something more traditional, I think the Heritage is going to be more traditional, but as far as just a really beautiful handgun, I mean, this is very well done. Uh, of course, just the blued cylinder, the plastic grips versus wood grips, or the different type grips that they offer. I like the action on the Heritage. It's a very smooth action. Again, it's got those four clicks, more like the Colt. <laughs> uh, but it seems to be not as solid and robust. Uh, with the Ruger, it's a heavier pull, and it's only two clicks. Uh, and But it's got a really a solid feel to it. That may be a pro or a con. That's just a matter of, of the way it is. I think the pins in the Wranglers are going to hold up a little better than the screws on the Heritage, but you know, you can lock tight your screws down. Uh, the safety on the Heritage to me, you know, it's a little bit of a knock. Um, it's, if I had a safety, that's probably where I'd like it. It's very direct. You just pull it down and you're able to fire it. Uh, the transfer bars on the Wranglers to me is just excellent. It's proven. It's been around for a long time. Guys, it's just a matter of if you want to spend a little extra money for a Ruger, uh, and have a Ruger, or if you want to go with a Heritage, spend a lot less money and really just have a great little 22 pistol. Either one is fine. Not one, honestly, is better than the other because both of them have good points and bad points. The adjustable sights on the Heritage Rough Rider, it runs about $178 compared to $232. And these are prices that are taken again from Gun Zone deals. Uh, so, you know, it just gives you a good apples to apples comparison. So guys, if you've been seeing those Heritage Rough Riders in the case and thinking, man, those things are cheap. I wonder if they're any good. Uh, this hopefully will give you some ideas. Of course, the full review that I did on this. Oh, I was very pleased with this handgun. 
And then you had the Ruger, which has the Ruger name behind it. It's finished a little better. Um, you know, a little heavier, clunkier trigger system, but definitely solid. Uh, and so it's just one of those things where you have to decide. You want to go with the more inexpensive option or bump it up a little bit to the Ruger, you know, with a pretty established name to it. You guys, really, both of them are great choices. It just comes down to personal preference and what appeals to you. So guys, both are great, fairly inexpensive options to go out and just shoot a bunch of 22, which is cheap, it's plentiful, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, but with the single action, it just kind of slows things down a bit. It makes it great for first time shooters or just to get out and enjoy a great day at the range. And plus, it kind of makes you kind of step back into the old west with a kind of really easy caliber. And again, we want to thank Guns on Deals for sending the Heritage and also to Ruger for sending the Ruger. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. single six they do make a number of different six okay pretty rough riders in gun shops the Here we go, you bug. so guys hopefully 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 what is it hopefully ton of different models but one of the things about this handgun okay i don't have my i don't have my stuff on we'll take a look at the regular wrangler the wrangler wrangler well the rough wrangler wrangler God. <laughs> I'm pathetic. <laughs>